Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. A very biased collection as usual. Well, today a kind of a classic, at least a little bit. Uh, so, in infinitely many primes. Well, that's not quite what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about Euclid theorem for knots. So, Euclid theorem is, well, we'll see it in a second. It's about prime numbers. And I kind of would like to have the same statement of four prime knots, which I'm going to explain. So the classical setup, so this video is not about primes, but I'll start with primes anyway. So it is about primes, but about prime knots and not prime numbers. Anyway, so the classical theorem, um, which apparently goes back to Euclid. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell with those theorems that are so old. So it's really, 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 really old. Uh, so you can find it in Euclid's book. Um, by the way, fun fact. So it's actually not quite clear whether Euclid was one person or whether it was kind of a, a multitude of authors. So if you read it, uh, then certainly the number theory part and the geometry part are quite different in writing style, which is an indication that it's probably not one person. Anyway, I will call the author or the authors of uh, the, the book that you see here in my little picture, I will just call them collectively Euclid. And I don't actually care whether it's a person or not. Anyway, so here's Euclid theorem, there are infinitely many, prime numbers, so there are infinitely many primes. I just dropped the, num the word number in order to have a nice statement at the end, we'll see. And kind of the idea is kind of the basic operation of arithmetic is multiplication and primes are the elements. And I'm going to use the following definition of a prime number, you see it here. So P is called prime if any factoration in the form P equals A times B implies that A is one or B is one. Okay, so that's, what, is, what it means to be prime in this sense. Here, there are many equivalent definitions of primes, but this is what I'm going to use. So every factorization AB implies that A is one or B is one. And there are infinitely many primes. That's exactly the statement, which is not clear if you just think of the definition. It could be that it, eventually the number of primes just, well, just is, stops. So there are no new primes from whatever 1000 onwards or whatever, uh, so you actually kind of need to prove that. And Euclid had a very smart proof, which I'm not going to recall. And there are many, 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 many other proofs uh, known. So Euclid theorem is one of the most proven theorem, I think, uh, at all, in all of mathematics. Um, and we would like to have a look at something similar. And what I would like to do is not theory, which looks completely unrelated. Um, and it is completely unrelated. Well, maybe not completely, but it still has kind of the same type of flavor statement. So a knot is very simple. A knot is just a closed string in three space. So you take a rope, you put the ends together, and you can bend it as much as you want. Um, so knots are really cool. I like this picture. I had it up quite a lot. So here, what you see uh, on the on the left-hand side is a mathematical knot. It's really just the, the string in three space that you can build out of rope or whatever. And... Um, very often they're studied by the projections that you can see here in the picture as well. And on the right-hand side, there's also something knotty, um, but it's actually a protein that is knotted. And kind of fun fact, knot theory is very apl applicable. And um, yeah, proteins knot and the, well, the chemical properties of proteins are mostly based on how they are knotted. So life itself is knot theory if you want. And the same is true for DNA, so maybe really life itself is not theory. Anyway, that's not important for today. Uh, just a side story here. Sidekick story, yeah. Uh, so a knot is just what it is, a closed string. And you might wonder, is there some basic operation on those strings? And there is. And it's very like a multiplication of knots. And if you have a multiplication of knots, you will ask the question, are there prime knots? And if you have the notion of a prime knot, you will ask the question, are there infinitely many prime knots? And that's exactly where we are going. That was a spoiler, but I hope you don't click off right now. Um, so let's go and have a look. So the connected sum is a really, really simple operation in spirit. So you have a knot L and you have a knot M, and I create a new knot that I call K. So the new knot K is obtained by taking a little, little neighborhood of L, taking a little neighborhood of M, cutting it open and redirect the strings. Just cut it open and redirect the strings. And because, so you have, basically you have this and then you re reconnect them like this. And that's called the connected sum. And you can check that it's actually really behaves like multiplication. So it's uh, commutative, associative and all that fun stuff. 
and well defined and all that fun stuff. And it creates, it takes two knots and creates a new knot by just this little bridgey operation here. It's a very simple operation, a little bridgey operation, and you get two new knots. Okay, so you have something that looks like a, if you want, a, a, a multiplication structure or knots. So you can ask the question, well, what are the prime knots, right? Prime knots is exactly the same definition, just with a different symbol. So K equals, oh, so by the way, the symbol is called hash. It's called the hash product. Uh, don't know really know why, that's what it's called. Anyway, we can use any symbol we want anyway. And the definition with hash is exactly the same as definition with multiply. Namely, K is L hash M uh, implies L is trivial or M is trivial. And trivial just means it's yeah, not. So the, you just take a string and don't not it at all. That's the trivial one. That's corresponding to the one in multiplication. And you might ask the question, how many prime nodes are there? Um, and it doesn't seem to be a very simple question. And it turns out it has a very, very satisfying answer, namely exactly the same answer as for numbers. So primes and prime nodes and prime numbers behave very, very similar. I wasn't really able to pinpoint it down. It's a bit hard to find, but it's something 19th century. Uh, what is it? 20th century-ish, which is... Well, not as ancient as uh, Euclid, I guess, but I will still call it Euclid theorem for knots. And it's exactly the same statement. There are infinitely many prime knots, which is really not easy. And I show you the proof in a second. Well, I show you two proofs, actually. It's the same as for Euclid theorem. It really goes in parallel. Euclid theorem has many proofs. Euclid theorem for knots has many proofs. Um, anyway, so you can actually table them exactly like you would table primes. There you go, another analogy. Uh, here's the table of uh, prime knots with fewer than seven crosses. Um, whether you count the unknot as a prime knot or not, so let's just not count it anyway, and you get the prime knots with fewer than seven crosses. And this continues, so there's an infinite number of them. And the proof is that you can find families of knots. So here's a torus knot, a uh, link to a torus knot uh, video in the description, such that it actually is. Um, a prime knot. And you can check that they're all different by checking a uh, certain invariant. So I will do the same proof again in a second with an easier to draw family of knots. Kind of the idea is you find a family of knots that are all prime and that they're all different. So you have an infinite number of them. And here is another proof. Maybe it's easier. So I have those knots that I call P. Uh, what, are, what do I call them? P, P, Q, let's say P. P, Q, R for numbers P, Q, and R. And the only thing I'm doing here is I have P twists here, I have Q twists here, and I have R twists here. And the sign just determines in which direction I twist. So here you see two twists, and the, so the minus two here is saying I go this way, right? So over from the left, if I count, and from the right, if I look from the bottom. And here I go over from the left and do three twists. So this is number three. And if I haven't miscounted the so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven twists, seven. And you can define those for any P, Q, and R. Um, and as I said, Euclid's theorem has many proofs. So does its knotty version. And here's another one. You can write down a, one of these guys, which is called a pretzel knot. So pretzel primes, the pretzel primes, um, just depending on one parameter. So it's P, some or odd number, and then there's another two, another two odd numbers that they could associate. So if P is odd, uh, so those numbers are certainly all odd here. And so you do those twists, so P here, and the next one here, 2P minus 1 here, and you do 2P plus 1 here. And you can check that they are all prime. That's not so hard. And you can also check that they are all different, because there's a certain invariant, which is called the Jones polynomial, which is one of the coolest not invariants ever. And the, the minimal power of the Jones polynomial depends on p. So for different p, you get different minimal power. right? So the knots will be all different. And that's a proof of uh, well, Euclid's theorem for knots which uses pretzels, which I personally like a, a lot. It's just very simple. As soon as you know it, it's actually very simple. And the brilliance is, of course, to come up with a proof, which is another analogy to, to Euclid's proof, because if you read Euclid's original argument, let's say the cleaned up version, um, it's not so hard to follow, but to come up with it yourself is, of course, a very different question. Okay, 
So today I just explained the kind of similarities between knots and numbers. Uh, knots and numbers both have the notion of a prime and both have a Euclid theorem. So there are infinitely many primes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.